Hello, welcome to All Things Maya. My name is Maya, and we're going to be, and today we're going to be discussing the Great British Sewing Bee. It is season eight, episode eight, and it is thirties week. Another thing to note is it is the quarterfinals. There are only five people here, and it's almost to the finals. Are we excited yet? Um, so we're going to move right into the pattern challenge. For the pattern ch challenge, they were making sailors' trousers. They had wide legs, concealed pockets, and like a um, and like tons of buttons on it. So uh, that they had four hours to complete that challenge, and it it was a challenge. So for me personally, my fear level is I was kind of meh on it. Uh, three out of five, right, right in that neutral area. I feel like um, they're they're ultimately they are just bottoms um but there's a little more detail to them and i feel like um i have the basics of bottoms down so i was just kind of in i was kind of neutral on that um for the judges expectations however they wanted it to be precise precision has been key this season they are 100 percent like this needs to be precise, that needs to be precise, whether it was the parka, whether it was the um, mini sailor suits for the kids, they want precision. The waistband needed to be level. They had overlapping pieces. They need to be um, overlapped in the right direction. They had multiple pieces at one point at the bottom of the pocket that came together. You didn't want to have a hole there. Um, and once again, they said it was the hardest challenge ever, uh, which each week it feels like it's the hardest challenge ever and it may be uh it's getting more difficult the seasons are going on you've got a higher caliber of sewers so this was a hard challenge so in terms of the contestant progress we started seeing like the contestants helping each other out and talking again um they all seem to get past the bib opening on the pants fine that didn't present a problem it's once they got to the pockets that they had a real struggle um, Deborah and Christian Manny all ended up cutting their pockets wrong and having to recut the pockets. Deborah, who knows what it looks like but doesn't have the experience in making it, um, had difficulties um, with the thickness of her denim. Her denim, this is not the first time that she's had a problem with the, the thickness of the fabric that she's chosen. Um, she just seems to pick slightly thicker fabric than is required for the particular project or pattern. Annie realizes at some point that she is doing something wrong, but she just perseveres. She's like, I'm going to have to do it the best way I think that it should be. Um, so even though she's not sure if she is doing it properly, she does continue to move forward and get to the end. Broken starts off with saying confidence is key and confidence really is key when you're working on these pro types of projects. However, by the end, she suspects that um, she's having that she's not doing things well, that her waistband is incorrectly put in. And instead of um, whereas the other sewers are all machine sewing their buttons, she actually hand sews her buttons. So as we move into the judging. Um, they said that Deborah's waistband was good. The fabric was a little bit heavy and it caused bulky corners. They said Brogan had good fabric, but her um, she had misaligned her bib. The buttons, the buttons came off. Um, there just were generally lots of button issues in, in general, but one of some of her buttons came off and um, one of them was stitched straight through the pocket. And then Christian had good fabric but his buttons were, his button holes were made vertically and they were supposed to be horizontal. Manny had good, uh, good fabric. Um, they said the bottom of her pockets were really neat. They said everything was in the right place, but the waistband overhung just a little bit. And then Annie, they said that she had an excellent choice of the buttons that she used to go with the material, but the inside buttons, she had one of them on the right side and the other side was the other one was in backwards and then the pockets were placed incorrectly so they showed the wrong side of the fabric instead of the right side of fabric when you pull the bib down 
Um, so in the end, Annie came in fourth in fifth place. Annie came in fifth place. Brogan came in fourth. Deborah third. Christian second. And Manny came in first. Um, I feel like to, if I were to ask myself if I'm interested in making these at the end, I definitely say that it is. Um, I'd be interested in making something like this. It is a nice, clean looking pair of pants. I think I'm more intrigued with the process of making them, um, the added dimensions of the pockets and the layers on making it. So I, I probably, my fear level is actually still, is probably actually a little higher <laughs> because of it, but it does make me interested in making it. So um, then we moved on to the transformation challenge. And of course we have our 90 minute transformation challenge today. They were taking two men's secondhand shirts and turning them into women's 1930s blouses. The blouses, the shirts themselves were a silky material. So um, that really lends well to the 1930s blouses. They had the option of using plenty of trim from the haberdashery that was made for like 1930s look, but they can only use the two shirts. And I think the further along you get in these challenges when you're limited to just the fabric that they give you on like a secondhand piece of item that makes the trick the challenge that much trickier uh this in this particular challenge which i think is a really good thing they gave the contestants plenty of reference material in the form of 1930s adverts for women's blouses that is 100% something that if it was me, I would have 100% need it. Because when I try to think of what I would attempt to make, if I were doing this particular challenge, I tried and I tried and I tried and I couldn't come up with anything. And I just felt like I can't think of what the 30s really represents. I'm not that knowledgeable about it. Uh, I'm so far out of it some days that I didn't realize the 30s was 90 years ago. The 30s were 90 years ago. 90. That's almost 100 years ago. So, yeah, I couldn't come up with anything um, that I would make if it were me. So, when we were going through it, the contestants decided, uh, Deborah decided to, she said when she thinks about the 30s, she thinks of puff, puff sleeves and a very feminine waist. She went with a pleated collar to decorate her, her outfit. Manny said she wanted to work on a more feminine silhouette, which makes sense. Men's shirts are a lot boxier. So you want to change that and pull that in. Maybe give it some darts to accentuate the female figure a little bit more. Um, she did that by removing some of the side uh, from some of the side of the shirt itself. Christian starts working on a very cream top with um, and tries to do a zip and some black trim. And then midway through, he just changes his mind, switches to a green shirt, starts cutting. And he's like, I have no plan. <laughs> oh, dear gosh. Never don't have a plan. That never works out well. Mitch in the first episode said, I didn't have a plan. Mitch is no longer here. So, um, Brogan... She's starting to work on doing a panel shirt. She cuts out part of the the shirt, but she doesn't actually, um, she uses trim and bias binding, but she doesn't actually adjust the collar on the shirt at all. And um, overall, I think almost every contestant did puff sleeves. For the made to measure, they were making, they had five and a half hours and they were making a bias cut ball gown inspired by the ho the Hollywood actors of the 1930s. In terms of my excitement level for this, oh, not terribly excited just because I've never really worked on the bias before. So I would probably say a two out of a five scale, leaning towards the not really excited at all. Um, but just sort of the novelty of trying it out, I think would be very useful. Um, would be fun, you know, it's, it's similar to the to the sailor pants, you know, you kind of want to see What you can make of it how it how it work out. So um, In terms of what I would personally make Again, I'm not really familiar with the 30s. 
I'm not sure if this is something that would fit the 30s, but I'd probably go with a, a fitted ball gown with a bit of a train on it. Um, I think trains are very pretty. I think they're very uh, upscale and luxurious. Um, very much like wedding dresses have trains all the time. So I would probably go with something that's a train. I wanted to say something like spaghetti straps, but I'm not sure if spaghetti straps are very 30s either. So as we move on with the contestants, um, Brogan starts working on a Ginger Rogers inspired dress. Um, she does get to the end and she ends up having to hand sew the lining. You know, with the edit, everything seems really rushed at the end. So you're never really sure exactly what is pushed to the last minute and what isn't. But she had to hand sew the lining in. Um, Manny does a Jean Harlow inspired dress that she has a pattern for. Um, she does some open seams on the inside of it and she arms them down. Now Annie is doing the same pattern on her on her for her dress however she's doing it in red satin and she's using some um, Diamante embellishments from earrings and she opts to do a French seam which is really interesting because they did French seams in the luxury PJ um, uh, made to measure and everyone was really struggling but Annie this time goes I really enjoy making the French seams so um, and I can see where that really adds a, a nice touch to it Christian he decided to use some stretch velvet fabric um, and as he's working he starts to change his design similar to when he was in the transformation challenge he just starts making massive changes at the end he starts cutting frantically on the hem and then he does a last minute sleep Deborah she starts out really well and then she realizes that she had cut her fabric wrong because of the type of fabric it's slightly darker on one side than the other so it forced her to have to recut the front panel also, she used stabilizing tape for the seam that goes across at a diagonal, which was really smart because it's already on the bias and then it's hanging on a diagonal, so it's much more likely to stretch out. So when they go through the judging, they said that they love the color that Deborah did on her dress. It was a very pretty gold color. They said she did the seam just right and that her French seams were good and that she had just a perfect hem. Um, she did have a problem with the um, under the arm side area being a little stretched out from the binding. Brogan, they said hers was very chic. She handled it well, but her rolled hem on the end was out of shape and it, the fit on the bust was off just a little bit. With Annie's, they had nothing but good things to say. They, she absolutely nailed it. And um, it was seemingly incredibly neat and the fit was exceptionally good and the color was very impactful. For Manny, they said that she handled the um, seams neatly. They really liked the knot band that was sewn on it. It was sewn well, um, but they did say that raw edges on this side seam detracted from the glamour and in the end, her zipper on the back of the model was not centered well. Christian, his looked glamorous. They said his fit was good, but that was due to the multi-stretch material that he used, the stretch velvet that he used, which is not something that they would have had in the 1930s. Uh, so that's why everything was cut on the bias because in the 1930s, that's what gave it its loose drapey feel. Um, he has a, back, a gape in the back, which um, did not accentuate the, the back feature on it. And then he also didn't finish the hems, the sims. <laughs> and then he also didn't finish the hems on his sleeves. So um, of all of the contestants, I think the one that I really liked the best was Deborah's. She had a really nice color. It was really made well. I know she had a few slip ups with the binding, but the color of something can really draw your eye and, and make it um, really stand out. And by that, ex by that extension, Annie's color was really good and she seemingly sewed her outfit really, really well and they had nothing but good things to say about Annie's outfit. So I had to think about this a little bit. In the end, does this make me interested in trying it? Maybe. <laughs> um, there are just so many fiddly bits working on the biased for items 
and I just I'm one of those it's good enough crafters like you get so far along and you're like is this perfect or is this good enough and I'm very much like it's good enough and it feels like a bias cut gown is very much a must be perfect sort of outfit so in the highlights on the show I would say that the Man Yee's pattern challenge it proves it can be done she had four hours she did the sailor outfit it it wasn't easy to do but it can be done I also think Man Yee's transformation challenge was simple and effective it put color where color needed to be it gave it a nice silhouette it put a few um detailed touches on it that helped accentuate it like the armbands that were elasticated uh, so that was really simple and effective and I think that was a real highlight for Deborah's transformation I feel like hers was a highlight because she had the pleated color the colors all coordinate with each other um, she had the pleated collar the colors all coordinate with each other and I feel like it was well put together um, and also Annie's made to measure you can't knock Annie's made to measure they had nothing but good things to say about it again and um, it was it was great in terms of the low light of the program for this particular episode I would say that the low lights include Brogan's pattern challenge I cannot believe those buttons fell off I mean I can but I can't but I can because you're watching that and you're seeing her still in the morning you're like that's not gonna end well um, also I thought her transformation challenge was just kind of blah so Brogan's transformation challenge falls into that low light of the week. And then Christian's made to measure. Oh, it hurt my heart. Um, his made to measure fall, fell into, it just sort of fell apart at the end. It was too many things going on at once, too many changes being made. Um, just not enough finishing on it. Um, you have to really, at the quarterfinal level, you have to be able to finish your patterns and your made to measures and your transformations and you have to be able to do them well so with the final decisions for the week they gave no surprise they gave annie garmin of the week she rightfully deserved that um she essentially made a perfect bias cut dress in five and a half hours so congratulations to annie good good for you um congratulations seriously in terms of who left the B for the week, it was Christian. I don't think that was a surprise to anyone by the end of the made to measure. I feel like he was barely hanging on after the transformation challenge. And I feel like, I feel like never admit that you don't have a plan. Never admit it. Better yet, always have a plan, but never admit that you don't have a plan. <laughs> um, but he did well. He got to the quarterfinals, you know. It's already a good thing to get on the show because that means you've beat out other sewists who are um, competing. You're competing with other sewists who haven't had the chance to be on the show. But he also made it to the quarterfinals. So that means he beat out several people who did make it on the show as well. So what do you think? Uh, was Christian the right choice to go? Do you think Brogan should have still been on that chopping block? Uh, does this exit change who you felt like was going to be in the final or who your final lineup was going to be? And finally, are you excited for the final yet? We've got one more show and then we're at the final, semi-final, final, yay, here we go. Um, and I'm just interested to see what you, how you feel, what you think. Uh, anyway, if you like this video, feel free to hit the like button, hit the like button, and uh, feel free to subscribe and comment. Um, then you can see what else I'm going to be doing on this channel coming up. Anyway, thank you so much for joining the channel. My, this is all about Maya, and I am Maya, and I will see you next time.